Hej. <coughs> Hello, uh, welcome to uh, Sequence Solar. I'm Michael Suzuki. I'm a senior software engineer with Alfresco. I've been working five years in Alfresco. And in the past year, I've been working uh, for a team called Search and Discovery. And we work in particular search and we're branching out to doing analytics. And in the near future, we'll be uh, touching upon artificial intelligence and deep learning. But um, our brain body is pretty much search. <coughs> so, a bit more about me. Those who know me, uh, interesting facts about me. I'm colorblind. I can't see between red and green. I injured my knee um, by playing football. So, uh, that <laughs> has been unfortunate. And I speak four languages. And just a show of hands here, how many people speak more than one language? Just C++. <laughs> 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 well, when we get to a point where machines talk back to us, yes. Uh, but yeah, so you can see that the majority of the room speaks uh, more than two languages, probably three. Anyone speak five languages? Okay, I speak probably 20 languages after a few drinks. <laughs> but growing up, language is something that was taught to me is very important by my parents and will open up doors and for some reason that stayed with me all my life and applied it to computer languages as well. The more languages I know, the better I can think and see how other people will come and solve the problem or talk. And <coughs> in life, it's given me the ability to communicate and talk to people and see and travel. Um, a bit of a story about coming to Spain. <coughs> Unfortunately, one of the languages that I don't speak, and I, I'm staying in this lovely hotel where no one speaks English. It's only in Spanish. And there's this thing they have there. Most hotels you go, you come and have breakfast the following day, you tell them what room number you are. This hotel, however, requires you to come to reception the day before and reserve a seat. And otherwise, they won't let you in. They just say something in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm in this position where I'm trying to remember how you say I would like to have breakfast in Spanish. Very simple, but I wasn't able to do it do it, and as a result, I haven't had breakfast in two days. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't serve breakfast here. So having that ability to communicate uh, is so important. And also, I can imagine that the frustration when you can't, you know, you can say it in English, you can say it in many languages, and if you had too much to drink, you say it in French to a German person, or you just mix languages. But having that ability to <coughs> express yourself and get what you want is hugely important. And that's why I'll come back to you later. <laughs> so that's why solar being bilingual is kind of like an apt theme to what I'm going through. And why is it so important? What are the benefits? 
same concept as us being able to speak in more than one language. So today we're going to go over a few things, so the state of play, what it is, um, how does it work, and we're going to do some sample queries to elaborate on the differences and show the quirkiness. Uh, there is something called loss in translation about some of the limitations of Solar and SQL at the moment, and some new features, and finally we're going to do a demo. And State of play. So this is fairly new stuff that was only introduced uh, back in Silver 6, which was uh, way back in 2016. And since then, a lot of things have happened and been added. And the way things move in the solar community is very fast. And so this was pr put in 2016 to Solar 6 as a proof of concept. And they really wanted to see what you can do with SQL and how people will take this on. And the community in solar are very keen to expand more than to solar to other um, forms of communication to get more adoption. And they've introduced this concept of SQL uh, inside solar using um, the um, Presto SQL parser. And obviously, clearly, this became a very popular feature, and more and more people wanted to know more about it and see how you can do certain things with it. That they've taken the decision: let's put more effort and time and make this better. And they've recently ported that about two months ago to CalSide, which is an Apache project that's quite interesting and worth the read. So, Solar, at the moment, comes in two flavors: you have Solar Cloud and Solar Standalone. And they're basically the same thing, <coughs> only the way you start it is different, and you get certain features in Solar Cloud. And this particular feature is only in Solar Cloud at the moment. There is work currently underway to port that to the standalone. And why is this important? Because um, Alfresco is based on the Solar Standalone. So once we have this on the Solar Standalone, the next work is for us to integrate that with our Fresco Solar. And luckily, the people involved in it are us. We're in Alfresco have been contributing this code to Solar. So uh, we're quite confident that will be anytime soon. So we'll keep you updated on this. And as for the future, there's going to be a few more um, <coughs> additions. So the limitations that there is currently now, they're going to work on it. They're going to introduce ODBC driver. But currently we have a JDBC driver, and we're going to touch a bit on that in a minute. So, how does it work? Um, those of you who know Solar, um, there's this thing called collections. And collections are basically your indexes. And we treat these collections as a table, and we use something called the streaming expression. The streaming expression Solar is the Solar query language and it's an API that we can use. And what we do is just basically translate and map the SQL statements into solar queries, and then we get the data back. So very simple. And so what is <coughs> important? Going back to again, I haven't had breakfast, and knowing how to say that, I'd be in a happier mode and full, at least. And so it's really important to express and have that ability to query and get something back. And having it in more than one language really opens up possibilities. And most of the people here probably know more SQL than uh, solo query syntax. Uh, just a show of hands of SQL. And if you're also solo, you, uh, so just for the people who are not in the, uh, present in the room, there's literally five hands raised. And so those five people here um, will be able to query, query solar and get what they want easily, while the rest of us will be like me, frustrated, not able to have our breakfast. So um, 
here comes SQL. So SQL is widely used, so anyone <coughs> can start and just work with Solar and extract the data. And just, you know, uh, it hides a lot of complexity in the language. Uh, Solar query can be quite confusing, and especially to a newcomer, it can be quite daunting. Uh, just anyone here speaks Japanese? Good. So I speak Japanese, and uh, there's an example of um, the complexity in the language. <coughs> in English, you can say, my brother or my sister, to refer to your family member. In Japanese, that doesn't exist. You can say it, but you'll be frowned upon. There's a hierarchy you need to follow. You can say, my eldest brother, my younger brother, my middle brother. You can't just say brother. It would be just completely distasteful. And so there's these nuances and complexity in the language. So, so it's kind of the same. And we can hide all of that with SQL, just saying, uh, get me whatever, versus the complexity you can find in Solar. Uh, we'll see a bit more in the examples. I have a few examples of how you write certain things in Solar, and, and we'll do it in SQL. And finally, the cool thing about it is the JDBC driver. So Solar 6 uh, comes with a JDBC driver. So you can actually plug in your favorite um, <coughs> DB visualizing tool to query Solar. So you can have, uh, in this example, we'll be using uh, in the demo DB visualizer to connect to Solar and do some queries. In addition to that, there's a lot of reporting tools that use SQL as an interface to extract data. So it's a really powerful way for us to export the data and do reporting and analytics by just using SQL. Unlike Elastic, uh, you know, Solar is open source, but they don't have investments, so Elastic have their own plugins, and but if you can use SQL, it does the same job. And yeah, let's make more use of it. So some sample queries. Um, I created for this demo a index of um, movies. I've extracted some 5,000 movies out of IMDb and <coughs> stored it into Solar and called it the films database or table. So if we wanted to find out something like how many films are in the database or Solar uh, index, we would normally write it like this. So the Q stands for query, star colon, star, so all the fields and any values. So that's the equivalent of doing anything. And I'm only interested in the number of found. So, uh, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Can anyone tell me what that is? So that's the field list. And I'm only interested in bringing back the field list named number found. And now bring us the value. In the demo, we'll see the actual value, what it is. Anyone can guess how you do this in SQL? Select number round, found, friends. Exactly. And the previous question was dead silent. And now I can, in SQL, I can hear people murmuring and thinking. So already, we can see that you can work with it. And query and get the information you want. So I've kind of added a few more questions, like which app to play the uh, most leading roles. And this here, again, we're querying, asking Jason Fassett on the act uh, um, underscore one underscore name. That's IMDB's period uh, data extraction that I presume that's leading roles. <coughs> you have act one, act two, act three. But we'll take this example and get anyone who was uh, playing most leading roles. And the equivalent of that would be select, we do count function, and we have a group by, and we have an order by. So as you can see, there's quite a few things supported in Solar at the moment to do SQL. And this is the more complicated one where we do the roll-ups. And if we want to find which director made the most money, we can do that. So uh, I'll reveal all the answers uh, as part of the demo, but you guys can take a guess. And we'll see how it goes. So loss in translation. 
Uh, I don't know if you've seen the movie. For those of you who haven't, there's a great scene where Bill Murray is playing this actor who's in Japan to promote a whiskey commercial. And there's an interpreter and a director, and the director talks to the interpreter, can you please translate this? This is very important. She goes, yes, of course. The director goes into a 20 minute talk about how the scene should be played, the emotions and everything about it, which then the translator went to Bill Murray's character and said, just say cheers to the camera. <laughs> when Bill Murray replies back and, are you sure it's all he said? And I kind of think that's appropriate for what we have is, there are some things that, you know, in languages you can't translate, you can say certain things better in one language versus the other. And Solar is not a database, it is a search engine, so you know, don't always expect normalized data. You have all kinds of craziness. But you can try to make it as normalized as possible, but at the end of the day, it's a search engine. So uh, keep that in mind. <coughs> um, select all from table, which is probably the first statement you learn that in SQL uh, does not work, it's not supported. I can go into the details of the technical reasons why and the issues, but uh, those of you who are aware of solar schemas, due with the complexity and the dynamics uh, that we can do, and we won't go too much more. The other thing is, like is not supported, and not known is not supported. Apart from that, it's pretty usable. It's really good. Trust me, it is. So, on to solar predicates in SQL. So this is a topic where I'm really excited about. It's really cool in the sense that <coughs> you get to a stage where you're so fluent in some languages and you start speaking in one language and end up throwing a few words from another language and that person understands you. And that's kind of the same here. You can actually mix and match uh, SQL and solar syntax. So you can take some of the most powerful <coughs> search manipulation techniques in solar to extract information, and also combine that with SQL. So you can be a complete beginner and get your information knowing SQL, and you can be an expert in solar and just find it more concise to write things in SQL, but add a few features that you can only do in solar. <coughs> so in this example here, can anyone <coughs> guess what's happening? The first, this here in bold is, yes, it is a range query, and that is a solar syntax. So we can actually pass a word clause and use solar <coughs> syntax, which I think is pretty cool. And in this one here, I'm interested in finding out all of Johnny Depp's movie that our IMDb ranking popularity is above seven, because he's done some movies that are pretty bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> so, <coughs> yeah, uh, so to filter that out, this is the kind of thing you would do. And here, if we want to actually pass a specific solo query, we'll tell this and that will tell the parser that, oh, this is using solo query syntax. And here we're looking at the movie title column and we're doing a hack for like. I know I said you can't do like, but if you pass it the solar query, you can actually do like anything that has B star. So bring back everything with a B star. And a workaround to the not null will be again passing a solar query with the movie title and just say star. And that will be the equivalent of just bring back anything that has a value. <coughs> so these are the things that we still need to work on in SOAR and introduce that. But you know, you can do pretty much anything you want, and you're not limited. And if you use the SOAR predicate, predicate, you know, there's endless options of what you can write and how you can write it, and be quite readable. This previous JSON format we saw is not the easiest thing to read. And my colleague, uh, Gethin, would know this, because sometimes we Skype each other the uh, JSON query, and we get, instead of the query, we get <laughs> smiley faces and all kinds of emojis coming up. 
So a sequel is far better than that. So on to the demo. Um, again, <coughs> just to reiterate, I'm using a extract of 5,000 plus movies from IMDb. And we're going to use the Solar Admin UI to just do basic queries to just show how we can query. And then we're going to see how JDBC works using a DB visualizer. And finally, we're going to see a reporting tool doing wonderful graphs uh, using the JDBC tool. And the reporting tool we're going to use is just a Apache Zeppelin, which is a notebook. So onto the demo. <coughs> I'll have to say goodbye to my clicker. <coughs> So, once you start uh, Solar, you get to the admin UI. As you can see, this is the Solar Cloud, and you can tell that there's a cloud here. Uh, we select the collection we want to work with, and then this is normally how you do work in Solar. You just come with queries here and build it up, and you just do find everything and get the information back. So I'll give you a minute to just kind of study the fields and what you can see in the user table. So now that we have an idea that this is the information we can find, let's play around with the SQL query. <coughs> right, live demos, yay. So we're just going to find, I love audience interaction. <laughs> what do you call pair programming when there's 50 people pairing? <laughs> Easy there. Um, <laughs> so the question is uh, pair programming in group. Uh, I think that would be from the community programming. Oh, there you go. And so, I'm very pleased to see that the demo worked. I'm able to just get some films uh, back using query, and especially that this is all written by me. So uh, we're now able to do some, you know, multi columns and so forth. Uh, but you'll trust me that we can do as many columns. And let's just try to do some work uh, Well, let's do it. Anything that's above. 2014, reasonable enough. <coughs> so everything works. You can do. <coughs> now, if we do the predicate stuff, uh, hopefully. Uh, any particular years? 2003 to 2005. Very good choice. <laughs> Vintage. Yeah, so uh, my date with Drew. Yay, yeah. Great year. So, as you can see, we. We knew. Puppy chair is my favorite. Two packs resurrection, who's seen that? <laughs> Classic. <laughs> so, I just have to see the IMDb popularity if I remember. But, uh, you know, I'll, I'll digress. So that's a quick visualizer that you can do uh, using uh, the admin um, console because most people in the solar community don't have a DB visualizer. So uh, this is a nice quick way for them to just kind of test some <coughs> concepts. But you know, most of you guys have SQL or Postgres, sorry, uh, running. Um, <laughs> so you would have some kind of a DB visualizer like this. And that would work here as well. And yeah, I didn't refresh from earlier, but um, so here, just giving you an idea of how we connect to it. This is how you fill in properties. You load in the JDBC driver, and you tell it where the uh, table is, and the details about how to do it are all on the solar, so it's very easy to follow. And then, obviously, here's your SQL tool. You tell it that's where you want to connect. Uh, one. Uh, so, who's interested in finding out which actor played in most films? Any guesses? Kevin Bacon, Nicholas Cage. <laughs> <laughs> the 
a month for Kevin Bacon, and one for Nicolas Cage. And that's your answer. <laughs> yeah, Nicolas Cage is up there. So. <laughs> Leading roles, sorry. Oh, you can say leading roles. <laughs> <laughs> Afterwards, we can sit down and expand the query to include actor one, actor two, two, actor three columns. Uh, but they don't go past actor four. Okay. So, yeah, bit parts don't count. <coughs> so, we've done the DB visualizer, and this is now connecting through JDBC. And what we're going to do now is the Patrick Zeppelin. So, uh, I don't know if anyone's familiar. It's a very easy tool. It's fun to use. And all you do is you add an interpreter, which is the way you connect to the back end. This one I've created the one called Solar. And it's very easy to configure. <coughs> and you pass in the JDBC <coughs> details. So this is probably clearer to see. That's the JDBC driver we're going to use. That is the URL. And that's pretty much it. And obviously, you need to load the driver. What's really cool about Apache Zeppelin, it has this Maven feature. And our Maven uh, fanatic there is still um, in his own world. <laughs> uh, but this Maven feature loads drivers automatically. All you have to tell it is just the artifact details, and voila, it's all there. So um, th that's a really cool feature. So. You don't need to actually have a physical drive, you just need to point it to the Maven repository and it pulls it in. Um, Zeppelin, you can create the nodes and it supports markup language, so you can just do this on the fly. So I'm just going to say, um, welcome to Solar Fresco demo. And I'm a UI guru, I did all of that in the click of the button. So, that's very good because we're in the back end. People should never come near the UI. And did I mention I'm colorblind? So, uh, yeah. So, it's a really nice, easy tool for us to generate reports and play around and some concepts. So, in here we have number of films made by year. So, you can see we're doing the title, we're doing a function. Uh, so, this wasn't possible until we started reporting things to CalSide. So, we have now account. You can do order by, and you can do even sort. So this is kind of the description we have. We have going, 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 and then 2016, we have a bit of an anomaly here. My opinion is, I think this data was taken at that point and somewhere mid-year, so it doesn't have the full data. Most grossing director, any guesses? This is an easy one. James Cameron? Cameron? Spielberg. Right, who said Spielberg? <coughs> there we are. So James Cameron only came in <laughs> So uh, any problems and issues with the data? <laughs> <laughs> data does not lie. So with this, I will conclude my demo. We can try to do, if you want, I can do more afterwards and show you some more. But now, as you can see, there's fun things you can do with it. Can uh, you show any queries against El Fresco? Not at the moment, because I haven't done that. And um, due to the sensitivity of information and so forth, uh, and, you know, I can't have people say fake data about El Fresco. Uh, but no, um, due to I thought movies would be a bit more interesting. We can do definitely more stuff with our fresco. And I think, well, uh, I'd like to thank everyone, but uh, jump in straight to questions, because I know if I don't finish this on time, my colleague over there is going to do this thing to my other name. So. <laughs> Are there any questions for Michael? Yeah, hi. Um, it's only available for Solar Cloud. I guess it's not yet in the 5.2 release of content services? No, and it's not even in Solar. So, so then my question is, once it is in Solar uh, SQL installation, can you upgrade Solar independently of Alfresco and make it available for 5.2 by then? Um, so as you know, uh, there's been some changes in the company. And 
the search team now, we have our own cables, so we can deploy things uh, in our own time. So when we feel ready and it's ready, we can just push the code. And so we can kind of work on our own cycle. And we hope to get that soon. And, um, we have lots of members uh, working in the solar community with us. And luckily, we have some inspiration and future stuff. Are helping us get that. So we should see that coming soon, some, someday in the near future, hopefully. So we're very excited, we'd like to have this capability in our customers. Okay, one first question from Will. Uh, yeah, this is very quick, I, but uh, yeah, I, I, I found myself looking at that list thinking, where are all the women? I know. Um, <laughs> but it, it really makes you, I think it illustrates how you can look at a graph like graphs or a list. Oh, and, and, and some things really jump out at you that, that you wouldn't necessarily see otherwise. I wonder if they uh, if they actually have uh, the sex and uh, ethnicity and things like that that Hollywood have been criticised for before in their API. So, um, let me just go back to the, I was playing around, sorry, with the different graphs that you can have. So going back to the most grossing directors and so forth, uh, you won't see many women, because we don't have many female directors in 2000. And going back to Lossy Translation, she's probably one of the first known act, uh, female directors in Australia, which is um, Coppola, Sophia Coppola. So yeah, you know, data doesn't lie. We'll see you there. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, everyone.